So we're now at the part of the Moving Forward series where we are going to be talking about teams that got eliminated in the conference semifinal of the playoffs, also known as the quarterfinal. And the first team we're going to talk about that got eliminated in the conference semifinal is Orlando City. And after five years of frustration and five years of what seems to kind of be a meme team of MLS, they finally broke the curse and make the playoffs for the very first time this season. And depending on how you look at it, you can say that they finally made the playoffs for the very first time in the MLS's back tournament by getting into the knockout stage. Or if you're kind of a traditionalist, you can say that they finally broke the curse and made the playoffs for the very for first time later that season in the Audi MLS Cup playoffs. But either way, they finished with, with a record of 11-4-8 and, and they finished with 41 points. They scored 40 goals this season, allowed 25 goals and had a goal differential of plus 15. They finished fourth in the Eastern Conference, but unfortunately, they got eliminated by New England in the quarterfinal, also known as the conference semifinal in the Eastern Conference. And another thing that I didn't put on there is that they made all the way to the MLS's back tournament final, but unfortunately fell at the final hurdle in the hands of the Portland Timbers. Now, the MVP of this team, this was a really tough choice because there was definitely a lot of players that I could choose choose from this Orlando City team that was the MVP. Uh, I could have chose guys like Daryl DK, Nani, uh, Antonio Carlos, Pedro Galese, Maurizio Pereira, and all these guys that was just just standout player for this Orlando team. But in the end, I decided to go with Chris Mueller. And I think the biggest reason why I decided to go with Chris Mueller out of those guys is mainly because of the stat chart. I mean, he did finish the top goal scorer of this team and also was one of the top assist leader and only one assist behind the eventual top assist leader of this team that is Maurizio Perea. So not only the fact that he was contributing in terms of the goal scoring department, he was also contributing in terms of the assist department too. And that, you know, we talk about how Chris Mueller is a guy that I feel like he definitely had a, a potential to be a very de decent player. And it's kind of such a shame that that during the, the time before Oscar Perea ar arrived, to this team that he was kind of getting wait, wasted at Orlando City. Like, I remember when James O'Connor was taking charge of this team. I just don't understand why does he decide to keep him on the bench. And kind of, it feels like he, he didn't have any confidence that Chris Mueller could definitely fulfill the potential that we said that he could be. Well, now that he kind of got a chance under Oscar Pereira, you can finally see that he has finally lived up to his potential. And that, you know, if he can continue to... to play like this there's definitely going to be some European interest that is going to come down the years now for the disappointment of this team well there wasn't a lot of disappointment for this Orlando City team but the obvious disappointment I have to to choose is Dom Dwyer and I know it sounds very easy and that it's he's kind of an easy target to basically said that it, it he is the biggest disappointment and that you know it's kind of maybe in some way harsh to say that it was a disappointment for Dom Dwyer because he didn't really play a lot of minutes but that's kind of the whole point of it and that you know while all the most of these guys from this Orlando City team that have either either been able to get finally given a chance to to be in the starting eleven and, and show their potential or the fact that all these young guys have excelled under Oscar Perea Dom Dwyer is an outlier and that his career you know we talk about how his career really started to kind of tumble with some some of those injury concern and the regress that he has faced well I think Dom Dora really hit rock ball this season and that again he wasn't really given any any playing time whatsoever because he was buried deep into the depth chart and it's no surprise that Orlando decided to let him go this offseason and that you know it's kind of also interesting that there's no no team that have actually decided to give Dom Dwyer a chance and pick him up of free agency and that he technically does not have a team whatsoever so yeah this is definitely not a great great time definitely for for a guy that remember a couple of years ago when he was he used to be one of the most dangerous striker in the league and that he was actually breaking on the friends of being on the u.s men's national team oh hell things have really they they take a, a a turn for the worse for Dom Dwyer and that his regression has really shown in the past couple of season and that you know if he eventually is not going to able to find a team you wonder maybe he might even think 
about retiring because of the fact that he is now into to almost in his mid 30s and you know when you aren't able to find find a team to play maybe that could definitely be an option but still i really hope eventually he does get get another shot in mls but right now it seems like like he's been on free agency for a very long time and no mls team has even think about trying to pick him up off a free agency now in terms of the top goal scorer for this team we got chris Mueller finished with 10 goals followed by daryl dk with eight goals nani finished with six goals in third place followed by benji michelle with five goals and then you got junior urso fi finish finish in fifth place and round out the top goal scorer chart for orlando city with three goals top assist leader you got maurizio Perea leading the team with eight assists followed by chris Mueller with seven assists nani in third place with five assists followed by daryl dk with four four assists and that goes the same with Juan who rounds off the top five chart with four assists to his name now what went right for this Orlando City team well there was definitely a lot that went right for for this team and the obvious thing that went right for this team is that they finally ended the curse they finally made the playoffs and ended one of the longest playoff drought that any team team currently have coming into the season and then, of course, let's not forget about the MLS's back tournament run in that they're kind of almost like the people's team during the MLS back ter tournament and that a lot of people, including myself, was also kind of rooting for Orlando City to, to definitely do very well. And I kind of temporarily stopped rooting for them when they play against Minnesota and that, that you know, obviously I want my loons to get, go to the final and have a shot th for them to get their first ever, ever trophy, but fortunately it didn't happen. And that when that when Orlando was able to beat them, I started to kind of cheer them again and hope that they can finally complete what a Cinderella run that they had during the MLS back term. And it's also kind of a great story too, in a fitting way of them finally winning their first ever silverware on home soil. So at the wide world world of this new complex in Orlando to win their first ever trophy. But unfortunately, obviously that that didn't happen and as i mentioned they fortunately fell on the final hurdle by losing to the timbers in the final but to go back to what also went right for this orlando city team is the revelation of oscar Perea, and that i i said it before and i said said it again oscar Perea should have won the coach of the year like you know i i have no no disrespect toward jim kern the fact that you know he eventually was the winner of this coach of the coach of the year this season and that i understand what jim current did to this union team and able to get get this team that was full of academy product to reach the pinnacle of of the mls regular se season title but at the same time i feel like in in terms of of which coach that actually made an instant impact and a coach that just came into to a team and instantly changed the fortune of a team that has had so many bad luck in the past couple of years, it's got to be Oscar Perea. I mean, the way that he just instantly made 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 an impact, and that a lot of people didn't think that that was the case. When you look at his his first two game in charge of this team, like I remember when he was taking charge of this team for the first two game, they were definitely not looking good whatsoever. But then the MLS is back tournament happened, and talk about the incredible run that they had, and the fact that he can. He continued that incredible run, even in into the regular season, is just, just, just worthy of, of definitely him getting getting the coach of the year. And that the other thing that I also want to say about Oscar Pereira, that I don't think I have to give him enough enough credit besides the fact that he's turned the fortune of this team, is the way that he's been able to give give guys that used to be be kind of an outcast for this Orlando team, or even some 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 young guys that they he picked up. From the draft or guy, guys that he of course signed during the offseason and how all those players turns out to be a hit like you talk about Chris Mueller a guy that was an outcast for Orlando City for the past couple of season there was even some rumbling that he might be moved he actually might be might be cut with this team well he turns out to be just an incre incredible player and kind of a, almost an MVP level type of player this season under Oscar Graham and then Daryl DK, a guy that came out of the draft. Nobody has ever heard heard of, of this guy until when he started to score score goals during phase one of the schedule. And by the time when he was on such a hot hot streak like that, everybody now knows who Daryl DK is. And he even eventually was able to to make it to the U.S. men's 
national team. And even some guys, and as I mentioned, he, he brought guys like Maurizio Perea, Antonio Carlos Jr., Urso, and all those guy, guys that he has able to, to, to bring in to Orlando City and actually live up to the potential of, of what they need to do. Just to show shows how how much of an influence Oscar Pereira has in in terms of able to develop these guys and make this team to now be a play of contending kind of team. And that this is also kind of another reason where for this season that they also kind of turn turn the fortune in terms of all these off season signing and that. Remember a couple of years ago where Orlando was crowned as the off season champions of the league because of all these big signing and. At, and then when the season kind of, kind of started, all these big signings that they made in the offseason turns out to a big flop. Well, this time it was a different story. This time all the signings that they they made this offseason turns out to to be a hit. And it's no surprise that, that because of that, they were able to finally make the playoffs and finally end it, that playoff drought that they had in the first five seasons of unable to reach the promised land. Now, what went wrong for this Orlando City teams? And while there was a lot that went right with this team, there wasn't really a lot that went wrong with this team. And I kind of had to be a little bit nick nick picky in terms of what I choose went wrong for this Orlando team. But obviously, the biggest thing that went wrong for this team is that yeah, they lost their composure in the playoffs. Like when you look at these two playoff games that they of course of course played, both of those games feature a red card. Like in that game against NYCFC, I thought they kind of got away. With it, with the way that that they were down to to ten men for part of that second half, and also for for pretty much the entire extra time, and somehow in some way they still got that one into a penalty kick shootout, and then they also had another red card with Galacia getting getting sent off in the shootout, and that you know I I know the the heroic of Rodrigo Schlegel is gonna live down down in terms of history as one of the greatest moment we have ever seen in. MLS playoff history, but you got to say that they kind of got very fortunate in terms of that stuff, and I'm not quite sure we're we going to see something heroic as what we saw during that moment for the second time. And then, unfortunately, in that game against New England, that loss of composure and the lack of 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 kind of just just discipline continue into the game against New England, where they 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 had a lot committed a lot of fouls and a lot of players was getting yet yellow cards and I just thought well if there's a lot of players are getting yellow cards and they're kind of playing in in a very kind of hot head style uh, of way something tells me they're going to get get a red card sooner or later and indeed that of course was the case and unfortunately unlike the, the game against NYCFC where they got away with with a game of having having to play down to 10 men for majority part of the game they weren't able to get away with it in that game against New England now, the second thing went wrong for them is that, as I mentioned, they, they miss out a big opportunity to get their their first silverware against the, the Portland Timbers in that MLS's back tournament final by losing to, to them. And then the third thing that went wrong is that, you know, they did kind of had a stretch where they really, they kind of struggled to score goals. So we talked about throughout this, this season how Orlando City is one of the, the probably most entertaining team to watch and that we know that Oscar Pereira plays this beautiful or soccer and they do they're probably the one if not the best team in terms of their build-up play but the problem is there was a stretch of period where even with their their beautiful build-up play that they they do they had problem in terms of getting into the final third and that when they get into that final third and when they need to potentially put the ball into the back of the net they weren't able to do so and that you know as much as i know know when you you have a team that ha- that play beautiful soccer and you do a good job in terms of build up it doesn't really matter un- until until the when you get to that final third third part and that that really is kind of the most impor- important part of when the team want to score a goal because if you don't do well in your final third it doesn't matter how beautiful your build build up is and that you don't get that that crucial final ball or if play players on your team aren't able to put the ball into the back net and not show their clinical for finishing you're going to struggle to score goals and that was kind of the issue with this Orlando team uh doing parts of that phase two, phase two of the regular season but thankfully they kind of started to sort that thing out before the playoffs be- begin from this season now moving forward for Orlando is that I'm pretty sure next season there's going to be higher ex- 
expectation. I mean, now that they, of course, make the playoffs and finally shed that that demon off their back, I'm pretty sure now that they're they're not just going to to be be happy the fact that they, of course, make the playoffs. I mean, this team, you know, the, this also kind of lead me to the second thing for, for them moving forward is the fact that it seems like they have the core to potentially compete for MLS Cup next season, and this is this is is the case judging by the fact that they've been relatively quiet this this off season and haven't really made made some big signings as we have seen in the past past season with this team but that being said i think a lot of that has to do with the fact that they feel like they believe that they have the core to compete for mls cup and again a lot of these players from last last year's team were relatively young and that most of them are kind of a little bit inexperienced in in terms of when they actually get into those those big games like the, the playoffs and during the later rounds of the MLS's back tournament. Well, now that they, of course, got that experience, uh, le- I'm pretty sure, sure Orlando City fans are hoping that in the second season, they can use that experience to now even go deeper for heading into this upcoming season or maybe even compete for MLS Cup heading into this season. Now, the third, third thing that is moving forward for this Orlando City team is that can these young guys continue to produce in their second season? And guys like like Daryl DK, Chris M- Mueller, uh, Maurizio Pereira, and all these guy guys that that were relatively new to this team in in their first season, can they continue that that productivity heading into the second season? Because it's one thing you have a a, a decent season and you're able to accomplish a, a lot and get the team to make it to the playoffs for the very first time but it's another where they need to of course follow that up and this is also where i talk about how you know they better believe that this core is actually going to be be able to continue to produce and continue to have an incredible full season in their their second year or else this could definitely not go very very well heading into the second year and it could be be oh no all over again for orlando city where they might might be finding themselves back into the problem that 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 hit them in the first five years, which is all these guys that kind of kind of underachieved achieved when they signed them do it during the off season, or the fact they did not do a good job in terms of building a, a squad during their early years of the expansion uh, uh, of the expansion season. But there you have it. That is pretty much it for the moving forward series for Orlando City. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of this, and if you're an Orlando City fan. What do you think went right? What went wrong? And moving forward, how your team is going to look heading into this upcoming MLS season. But yeah, until then, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you guys leave a like, smash the subscribe button. And yeah, I, of course, will see you guys next time.